In what should not be a surprise, given there are 14 games on tonight's slate, there are a lot of really fun options, both at pitcher and for stacking tonight in MLB DFS. And that means we got to kind of dig on through and be a bit picky with these options. I think we can do that pretty successfully and feel pretty good about the options we have, but a lot to sift through for sure. Some uncertainty with starting pitchers, stuff like that. So we're going to break down tonight's 14 game slate, get you ready for tonight and hopefully win you some money over on FanDuel.com. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire here to break down this 14 game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Couple weather notes on this slate. First one is out in New York for the Mets and the Cardinals. Doesn't seem super heavy, but it does seem like there is a good chance that rain does interrupt this game one way or another. So Mets and Cardinals definitely up in the air for tonight. Same thing in Atlanta for the Braves and Rockies. They're lower rain odds, so they should be good to go, but potentially some murkiness there. Check back on that one later. And finally, there is a chance of thunderstorms in Kansas City for the Royals and Angels. They should be okay, but check back on the timing of that rain later on as well. We'll dig into the pitching options, outline where I'm going on a pretty full slate, and then get you talking about some stacks later on. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts and also over up on the Fantasy and dual YouTube page. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up on YouTube or a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to twenty five hundred dollars. That's up to twenty five hundred dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to get a sn- snag a no sweat first bet up to twenty five hundred dollars when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be twenty one plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Ten dollar deposit required. Refund issued as is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in fourteen days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. Joe Ryan checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is eleven thousand four hundred dollars. Followed by Kevin Gosman at eleven two. We got Shane McClanahan at eleven flat. Followed by Zach Gallon at ten eight. Tristan McKenzie is facing Zach Gallon. His salary is ten five. Followed by Michael Kopech at ninety eight. Julio Tehran is ninety seven. What a world! Love that. Andrew Abbott facing the Astros ninety five. Hugh Darvish gets a tough test with the Rays at ninety three. Domingo Herman ninety two with JP. France at 9,000. Sandy Alcantara, Taiwan Walker, Martin Perez, JP Sears, Trevor Williams, Patrick Sandoval, Rich Hill, and Tanner Houck are the others at $8,000 or higher. My goodness, that is a list. A lot of names in that list and a lot of names to sift through for today. After sifting through all those names, I wound up settling on Joe Ryan as being the top guy for tonight. And entering last night's game, I was skeptical of Sonny Gray against the Tigers. Didn't think he would leave after four innings, but um, I wasn't as confident in Gray as I am in Ryan for tonight. So Sonny Gray flopping last night, to me, does not impact my my handicap of Joe Ryan for today. Just much better form for Ryan right now and happy to be here for this time. The matchup, obviously, is a big part of that because the Tigers have a 122 ISO against righties with a 77 WRC+, plus, and they are more than willing to strike out. But Ryan overall is just pitching really well this year. 
In 13 starts, he has a 3.49 skill interactive ERA with a 27% strikeout rate. His expected ERA is even better at 2.45. I think that number, the expected ERA at 2.45, is overselling it a bit, but he's obviously pitching great. Now, Ryan doesn't always get a ton of leash. That's kind of the twins, the way they work uh, with the pitching, the starting rotation. So Ryan can have outings where he has just four strikeouts. And we saw that uh, each of his past two games and three of his past four. But we've also seen Ryan get double digit strikeouts three times. I've got Ryan projected for 6.7 strikeouts. It's not like a massive number by any means, but I think for tonight, given the fact that he probably is not going to allow a ton of earned runs, and that number is uh, number three for me tonight, the, the strikeout projection, that's high enough where I feel good about him. So Joe Ryan, to me, is going to be the top pitcher for tonight. I think there are plenty of guys you could list for the second slot behind Joe Ryan at pitcher, and you can justify all of them. My personal preference is going to be Michael Kopech at $9,800. And this feels odd because I was stacking against Kopech about a month ago. And obviously that didn't go well. I think that was against Houston when I did that. And he did walk six guys there, but didn't let up many runs. And that game is also when Kopech started to change the way he was approaching his pitch mix. In that game, Kopech basically ditched his curveball entirely. Now, the curve has never been a massive factor for Kopech, but it was his lowest whiff pitch. Uh, according to Baseball Savant, Kopech had just a 15.4% whiff rate on that pitch. His other three pitches are all at 27.9% or higher. So in getting rid of the curveball, Kopech basically became a three-pitch pitcher. And at least for right now, until teams catch on to him, that is working very well. Across six starts without that curveball, Kopech has a 2.99 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 35%. Those numbers are great. But when Kopech was a guy we were targeting with hitters earlier on, it was because he was also struggling with hard contact. But that number has gone down too, because in the six start sample, the hard hit rate allowed for Kopech is 30%. That has all helped him to rack up a 2.00 ERA in this time. And this is obviously a very small sample. He was at home for five of those six starts, and he had plus matchups. This time, he's on the road and taking, taking on the Mariners. That's a good offense, but they will strike out. 25% strikeout rate against righties in the current active roster that's a number we can use pitchers against as long as we're okay with the risk of facing a, a team that does have some good bats. So there is risk here because A, it's the Mariners. B, Kopech could revert back to his old form. But for the upside, I'm willing to take that risk. I like Kopech enough to rank him second behind Ryan, even on a slate with a lot of names on it. So to me, the studs for tonight are going to be Joe Ryan 1, Michael Kopech 2, and I feel pretty good in putting those both put those two guys that high on my list. We'll talk about some other pitchers you can consider and things to watch for tonight. Top value of the slate has to be, I think, Sandy Alcantara. I know he struggled this year, and he hasn't shown a ton recently to inspire confidence of a turnaround, but his salary is 88, and that seems absurdly low in a plus matchup. So I am going to make Alcantara the top value for tonight. He's facing the Nationals here. Obviously, not a ton of strikeouts in that matchup, but also not much else to fear. They have an 83 WRC plus against righties with a 124 ISO and a 32% fly ball rate. They're not a team we need to fear with opposing pitchers. Alcantara is definitely still struggling. He went seven innings with just one earned run allowed last week, but just four strikeouts there. And also, he let him five runs to the A's the start before that. So, this is not, I'm not on Alcantara because I think he's trending up. He's been kind of the same in fact if i look at like my full my most relevant sample for alcantara it's the full season in 2023 in that time his era is 4.75 his expected era is better at 4.11 and he's still got a 13 percent swinging striker which is actually higher than where it was at last year so he hasn't been great and i haven't seen a lot to make me think that that will turn around suddenly but there are still reasons to believe he's not fully broken and if he's not broken, I can't not use him here at 88 in this matchup. So if you get the vibe that Alcantara will be very popular, fine, pivot, you know, because he hasn't proven to us this year that he deserves to be a heavily rostered pitcher. But to me, 
the discount and salary and the matchup help offset the performance. So Sandy Alcantara, I think, deserves to be our top value. I know it's not a massively hot take by any means, but given the way he's pitched, I think that you could question that for sure. So as long as Alcantara is not too popular, he'll be the top value for today behind the top studs of Joe Ryan and Michael Kopech. Let's go down to stacks. I think this stacking slate is super, super fun personally. First one is in Atlanta for the Braves. Denelson Lamette has not been a disaster uh, as he transitioned to the to being a starter for the Rockies. His skill interactive ERA across three starts is actually in the low fours. He's getting some strikeouts. Walk rate's not too bad. But Lamette's letting up a lot of hard contact, and that has bit him in the results column so far. So I think we should stack the Braves against him tonight. It's a very warm game, 86 degrees in Atlanta, and that does bump up bats, and it also makes hard contact more dangerous. That's an issue for Lamette because across his three starts, his hard hit rate allowed is 53%. His fly ball rate is 37%, which is not no, not low enough to make that a non-factor. Lamette led up five runs to the Diamondbacks, three to the Giants, two to the Padres. Now he has to go on the road to face the Braves. They have a 109 WRC plus against righties with a 194 ISO. That's a very tough task. I think we should take advantage of the park factor, take advantage of the weather, and stack Atlanta against Lamette for tonight. Now, against Lamette, I do want to favor lefties because he hasn't had to face a ton of them being a reliever, but he has struggled against lefties the past few years. So the big impact for me of that is that I'll favor Matt Olson over Sean Murphy. Both these guys are awesome. They both had fantastic years, but... I will sometimes consider going Murphy above Olsen just because I think Olsen tends to be more popular. Sour is super, super uh, close. I mean, you can use both, obviously, as well. Uh, but I think that it does give Olsen a pretty legitimate edge. So Eddie Rosario gets bumped up against lefty. Ozzy Albies prefer him against lefties. or uh, Rosario gets bu bumped up against a righty. And Albies gets bumped up despite the fact I prefer him against lefties in general. But I do think that... Um, Olsen is kind of the big benefactor, specifically where I view him relative to Sean Murphy within these stacks. The other hot game on this slate is the Royals and the Angels. And the temperature here is actually higher than Atlanta, 88 degrees versus 86 in Atlanta. As mentioned, check the weather here just to make sure this game will be good to go. But if we get the green light, I think we should stack the Angels. They're facing Brady Singer, and I still like Singer long term. Showed a lot to me last year. I Traded for him in Dynasty this offseason, so it's been rough, and he hasn't had it this year. The big issue for Singer has been hard contact, and he's been trying to work his way around this, trying to get more strikeouts to make the hard contact less of an issue. In order to do that, he has gone back to leaning heavily on his slider as past six starts. That has not helped the hard hit rate. It's at 52% in that time. That's despite having matchups in that sample with the Tigers, Nationals, and Rockies. Last time out, Singer had to face the Orioles, much better offense, and he let up four runs in four and a third innings. Now he's facing the Angels. The Angels have a 111 WRC plus against righties with a 40% fly ball rate, so I want Singer to turn it around selfishly for my dynasty teams, but I think for tonight, we should stack against him until we actually see that turnaround happen for Singer. Now, within this Angels stack, I'm not sure if Mickey Moniak will play. He's been pretty st spotty at the playing time, but I really want him to. The sample on Moniak in the majors this year is expanding, and he's up to 70 plate appearances against righties. His ISO is still 388, which is absurd. He has a 61% fly ball rate. He is striking out too much, which, which may be why he winds up on the bench. But overall, he looks awesome. He was playing great in AAA. His salary is 29. So if Moniak plays, I will definitely be there. For today, uh, the salary has been kept down primarily because of playing time. But I think that if he's in there, he's he's a really fun place. So Mickey Moniak to me, the key focal point within the Angels sack. We're saying a lot, giving the other guys, but according to accounting for salary, uh, he's a fun option for sure. Now for the third stack, looking at the Blue Jays' current roster, you would think they'd be awesome against lefties, but they have not been, at least in terms of hitting for power, and that may continue. But I'm okay betting against that continuing. And I do think they're a fine stack tonight. Facing Martin Perez, who was fantastic last year. And looking at Perez's numbers, I don't think what he did was a fluke by any means. But he hasn't been able to duplicate that this year. 
We have a nine star sample on Perez with his velocity stabilized and his skill interactive ERA is 5.26. It is up there primarily because he doesn't get many strikeouts, but he's also letting up a 38% hard hit rate with a 39% fly ball rate. Across the full season, Perez has a 5.14 expected ERA. That's up from 3.59 last year. So again, it wasn't really fluky, um, but like it hasn't carried over to this year. And it's also not trending the right way if you look more recently. He let up uh, seven earned runs last time out. He let up six earned against the Tigers, two starts before that. So if the Jays actually do have juice in their bats against lefties, they probably could show it here. So I feel inclined to give the Jays a swing and see what happens for tonight. The big catalyst of this turnaround against lefties from a power perspective would be Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Against lefties this year, his ISO is 027. That's not going to stick. That's very fluky. That's very much not going to stay. But George Springer has room to grow as well, so I'd expect those guys to trend up in terms of their numbers against lefties. I would not expect that for Alejandro Kirk. He's not a guy who's hit for power really in general, but uh, even again, last year against lefties didn't do a whole bunch. So uh, between Springer, Vlad, Matt Chapman, Bo Bichette, Danny Jansen, if he gets in there, um, I think these guys do have some power and the Jays salaries are all pretty low too. I think their highest salary guy is $3,500. So you can definitely stack them while using Joe Ryan pretty easily for tonight. Let's dig in now to things to watch. I did want to touch briefly on some of the other stud pitchers. Why I'd be willing to take a risk on Kopech as opposed to going to some of the others. Kevin Gosman facing the Rangers. It's a really tough offense. It doesn't strike out a ton. So that's why I couldn't get to him. Zach Gallon's strikeouts have been down recently. Also facing a low strikeout team. You Darvish gets a raise. I'm not opposed because his salary is low, but it's a really tough matchup. Shane McClanahan on the other side of that game is on the road facing the Padres. Tristan McKenzie was a consideration for me, especially with the roof closed in Arizona. So I would say if you want to take a swing at someone else, McKenzie at 10-5, not a discount by any means, but tempting for sure. Uh, I just preferred Kopech over those guys. So they're all at least somewhat in play. If you have a strong inclination towards someone like that, totally fine. I think you can easily justify any of them. But for me, it was Ryan 1, Kopech 2, with Alcantara being the top value. I think you could look at one-offs on the Rockies if you wanted. They're facing Jared Schuster, who is still trying to find his groove, but they're just such a terrible offense that you can't stack them. So for one-offs, the Rockies are okay. As far as other stacks you could go to, three teams are going with like bullpen-ish games tonight, and I think we can stack against any of them, honestly. Tigers going with a, a full bullpen game, which makes the Twins pretty stackable. That bullpen, not a shutdown unit, so Twins would work out pretty well. The Giants uh, facing Matt Andres, I think, will be the starter for the Dodgers. So the Giants, good offense. Andres has been fine in AAA this year. So the Giants in play for stacking. And on the other side, Sean Manaya likely to be the bulk reliever for the Giants again. And he's pitched a lot better recently. Uh, their bullpen overall has been very good too. But the Dodgers can crush lefties. There's a path to them being very good here. I'd rank those options, the Twins first, followed by the Giants, then the Dodgers, but all three teams, very much worth a look. Uh, I'd probably put them below the other stacks. Again, uh, the top stacks for tonight being the Braves, the Angels, and the Blue Jays, but all three of them at least were a consideration for me within the top three. So again, Twins, Giants, Dodgers, the teams uh, that I'd also consider in addition to the top three stacks. Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for today. Um, I was tilting yesterday because I have uh, Dalton Varsho in the same dynasty league as Brady Singer. And Dalton Varsho had another barrel that led to an out. So I was researching to see which batters have the most barrels that have led to outs this year. And the answer is Ronald Acuna Jr. Despite the fact he is sixth in WRC plus this year, he actually has the most barrels that have resulted in outs in the entirety of Major League Baseball, 15. So you could argue he's been unlucky. And he's been absurd without accounting for luck. So I'm going to go Ronald Acuna Jr. as my boring home run call for today. This is a really long way to get there. You know, being mad about Dalton Varsho stuff led me to wanting to use uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. as my, my boring home run call. But here we are. Ronald Acuna Jr. is a boring home run call for Friday night. The fun one, I will go Mickey Moniak if he plays because I just love what he's done. His AAA numbers are pretty good too. 
I think he's a beast. I wish they play him more. I have him in that same dynasty league. I should stop talking about dynasty, but uh, we'll go Moniak if he plays. If Moniak does not play, Eddie Rosario is the backup uh, for the Braves. Good ISO against righty. It's not great. It's good, uh, but hits at a good spot in the order. Gets a bump up against Lamette. So boring home run call. Ronald Acuna Jr., fun home run call. Mickey Moniak, and it's Eddie Rosario if Moniak can't go. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot and for this week. As for next week, I am off Monday because of Juneteenth. Enjoy the holiday weekend, everybody. Back with you on Tuesday. So no show Monday, back with you Tuesday uh, to give you more solo shot then. If you got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Want to thank you all for tuning in. Have a fantastic and safe weekend. We'll talk to you once again next week on Tuesday. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.